You know, someone was asking yesterday about your arm because they, she thought that because you don't lift your arm up to your head when you're sitting up, mm -hmm. that you don't have that range of motion. Come here. So I was. I guess that myself. You can. I was explaining to her how it's just gravity. Well, because the thing is, people know that your arthrogryposis, a lot of people know that your arthrogryposis affects your joints and muscles, right? Mm -hmm. But it affects your joints and all four limbs, like in your hands, it affects the joints between your fingers, right? Mm -hmm. That's why your fingers don't do this, right? They only do this. They only do that, right. And it affects your wrist joint because you can't do this, right? You can only do that. Um, but you can make your wrist a little bit straighter, but it if doesn't... you do it. Right, if you force it, but it doesn't go all the way straight because there's a contracture on this joint. It's and what is a contracture? You tell them. It's a calcification. It's a calcification on the bone. So it's actually a, a growth of calcium deposit on the bone that prevents movement. And so a lot of people are like, well, why doesn't she wear braces on her wrists? Well, she can't straighten them, like physically can't even force them straight and she's gone through numerous bouts of treatment to attempt to force them straight with casting which is as you can imagine very uncomfortable and just to have them regress again because there isn't a good surgery right now for correcting this and so Anna has decided that she's not going to continue going through painful treatments that don't have a positive end uh, especially when she can use her hands the way they are to do all the things she needs to do so, but back to the point of the joints, um, the joints don't move, right? She doesn't have the range of motion. So here we go up to the elbow. She is not able to do that. I can do this. But I can't bend it farther than this by myself, and I can't straighten it farther than this. But if you do it, you can bend it way farther than that. Yep, I can bend it up. Like that. And I can, I can straighten it out, but not all the way because yeah. so she, she, right. Contracture, right. Contracture. She used to be able to straighten that one all the way. In fact, when she was born, they were stuck straight, but then she had, bend one, a half centimeter. but then she had an elbow release surgery when she was one and two to make them so they can bend. And so what happened now, because this is so, so arthrogryposis is a, do you know the word? Umbrella diagnosis. No, that's, that's one thing. But no, as far mm -hmm. as what type of condition it is, do you know the word for it? it starts with an R. Regressive. Okay. It's a regressive condition, right? And that means that she was born in the shape that she was going to be when she was a baby. Um, with her joints contracted and her muscles non-existent. And we have done surgery and therapies and treatments to make corrections over time in order to move things into a better position so that she can function better. But arthrogryposis is regressive, which means that it's constantly trying to go back. It's constantly changing to go back the way it was. And so you spend your whole life fighting regression. Um, sometimes diseases, when you talk about diseases, arthrogryposis, I, I don't consider it a, a disease. We don't tend to classify it as a disease because it's not something that she has contracted. It's more of like a, a growth deformity that she was born with. And diseases tend to be um, degenerative, right? You use the word degenerative, meaning that as a disease, it gets worse over time. Arthrogryposis doesn't get worse over time. It never gets worse than it is when they're born. It's just that it's regressive. It tries to go back the way it was when they were born, despite all of the work that you do to change it. It may even get better after you're born. Yes, it does get better as long as you do treatments and therapies and surgeries. But then it constantly tries to regress and fight back against them. So that's why in the case of her arm, she was born with it straight. We did surgery to, excuse me, phone got blurry. <laughs> we did surgery to make it to this allow, we did surgery to allow it to bend. And now that it's been bent and she's been keeping it in a bent position, it, she's formed a contracture over the elbow, which is preventing it from going all the way straight. However, that doesn't affect function. So it's really not a big deal. Now getting to the original point, 
the person who was asking about her putting her arm over her head, in addition to the joints being affected with these contractures, these calcifications on the bone, she has non-existent or very, very weak muscles as a result of that. And some of those muscles are her biceps. You can see her arms are very skinny. The reason that her arms are very skinny, it's not because she doesn't eat enough. It's not because we starve her. It's because she has no muscle. This is just bone and skin. And she's never going to have muscle because her muscles are made of a different type of tissue. And she can't bulk up. She can't build a muscle. She can't, she can't lift weights and then all of a sudden have this pop and muscle out of her arm. It's never going to happen for her. So because that muscle is not there, that bicep, because the, the, um, the lat, the latissimus muscle is not there, because the tricep is not there, she can't lift her arms up over her head. So let me see. Lift your arms. Show what you can do. Well, this is, I can do this without arching my back. Right. I can, so, hold I can, on. So this is as far, if she's just lifting with her muscles, with the muscles she has, that's as high as she can lift her arms. I can lift my right one higher than my left one. Because mm -hmm. you've got a little more muscle on that side. Your left side has always been your weaker side. Okay? And then if you want to lift higher than that, what can you, this is an accommodation that you have figured out with, that you can do with your body in order to get more range, you do what? I can arch my back and I can reach it from, from here to here. So that's called an accommodation. So she's figured out over time that in order to get more reach, she's able to arch her back and lift her arms up higher. Now, if she's standing upright or sitting and she wants to brush her hair out of her face, which happens a lot, you can do what? can just kind of do this. You can swing can your arm. Oh, and I can, I can do that. So she can swing her arm up and use it to brush her hair out of her face. But here's where people get confused because when you lay down, you can do what? <laughs> and the reason why people get confused is because they think that the limitation is in the range of motion in her shoulder, but it's not. She has ra good range of motion in her shoulder, not as much as you and I do, but she has pretty good range of motion. But the problem is in the muscle. She doesn't have the muscle to lift it when gravity is fighting against her. But when she's laying down, there's no gravity fighting against her, so she can lift them up over her head. Yeah, and I can, I can kind of move my arms more. Mm-hmm. Move yeah. sides. No belly. <laughs> Pull your shirt down. Okay, so anyway, I just thought of that real quick when we started because she was lifting her arms up over her head and someone just asked me about it yesterday. Yeah, so I hope that uh, if you're the one who was asking or if you were curious, I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, throw me up some questions in the comments and I'll answer them. I'm excited to show them. But the reason why we're on today right now is because Anna's physical therapist reached out to me. Um, she wanted to see Anna's CAFOs. She wanted a video of how they work because she has another little AMC -er that could benefit from this design. So these KFOs, um, the, this is not like a design that you just go into the orthotic shop and say, hey, I need this design, and they'll know what you're talking about. They won't have a clue. These are completely custom. And when most people have custom orthotics in the sense that they do the molding to your individual foot in your individual leg and they customize your orthotic to fit you, right? But these are even more custom because I actually designed these. Um, I had the help of her orthotist up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but I told him what we needed and I didn't settle for anything less until he figured it out because I'm stubborn that way. She had that double leg surgery with Dr. Feldman. And he was able to get such great range of motion in her knees from that surgery. She was born with her knees stuck in a bent position. So she would not have been able to walk without the surgery that Dr. Feldman did. And so he was able to go in, clear out the contractures around her knees. He shortened her femurs by about an inch. He moved her tendons and ligaments and nerves and all that stuff around and then put her back together. And with doing that, she was able to get a range of motion from zero. Zero is completely straight all the way to 120 degrees, which is a pretty good bend, more than I can get on her right now, because again, arthrogryposis is regressive. 
But because I didn't want to lose that beautiful range that he was able to get when she was three, I had in my head that we were going to come up with a design for her night braces, which would hold that range in place because she needed to stretch and she needed to stretch forcefully. And that sounds terrible, but that's not a stretch that you can do with your bare hands because it needs to be held for a longer period of time. And this is why when she stretches at night in her braces, she stretches for a whole hour. So if you're not familiar with her night braces, these are the braces that she wears at night. They're long leg braces. They're called CAFOs, which are knee, ankle, foot orthoses. And this is what they look like when they're in a straight or an extended position. This is what they look like when her leg is being held at zero. And being held at zero is a really great stretch for this guy this left leg because this knee was the most stuck bent when she was born and it likes to regress, meaning go back to a bent position. So all night long, she sleeps with her legs in extension outside of that one hour of flex time. And the reason for that is to keep this guy straight. Otherwise, if she didn't do that, it would bend over time and get stuck back in this position. And then she'd have a really hard time walking. So we have to do this every night in order to keep that range of motion, okay? So this is set up, and it was really difficult to find this hardware. Can I sit? No, stay there, because I'm going to put this on you in a minute. Um, so this hardware is really unique. Now, they have a dial for larger braces like this, it's um, a circular dial that's about this big. And you can turn it with your hand to change the degrees, but it's, it's sloppy. Like it doesn't have the minute little changes. It kind of goes like jerk, 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 right? And so it's, it's a big chunk. And I wanted to be able to get really detailed in how much her leg was bending. And so Jeff, the orthotist that we were working with in Ann Arbor, Michigan, he searched high and low and he found these beautiful spring joints. And he gave me this, which we, you guys know, we dubbed Tina Turner. This is a turning tool. You can see it's like kind of like a, a wrench. It goes on there like that. And then you can see it glides. It's not a chick, chick, chick. Right? It's not a big change. It's a minute gliding spring mechanism that just gently cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks. And you can crank these all the way. Now, clearly her leg does not bend that much. Right? We know that. <laughs> that she does not have this range of motion in her leg and she never will. And that's okay. And but, right. but I, no, never. But I wanted to get to that 120 that Dr. Feldman got with the surgery. And I wanted to be able to stretch her to that point so she could maintain that as long as possible. Now, over time, she's lost that. And now we only get to about 110. This is a goniometer. This is the tool that you use to measure angles in the body. And so this is 110 degrees right there. And so if we put this up to this CAFO, we can see close, it's close. It's about 110 degrees. So this is about how far her leg gets now. Now this is metal. This is really hard, right? Like she can't fight her way out of this. It, it, forcefully holds her leg in this bent position. It holds it there for an hour, gives it a nice, good, long stretch on all those muscles and tendons that are constantly trying to tighten back up, it breaks through all of that contracture that's trying to form every single day, um, and keeps that range of motion. So she does this for one hour like that, and then we straighten it out. 
and she goes into extension for the rest of the night. So most of the night she is sleeping with her leg straight. The right leg does not uh, try to, it's not a very hard regressor as far as not staying straight. It's pretty good about staying straight. So this one mostly needs the bend and that one mostly needs the straighten, but they both need both of them. That's why I usually keep my, I usually keep my leg bent because it works. So Jan's asking if the surgeries can be redone if necessary when she's older. Sure, but we don't want to do that. It, anytime you do surgery, anytime you go in there and start cutting things up and moving things around, you create scar tissue. And so the more times you do that in the same spot, the more scar tissue you're going to create, the more problems it's going to cause. Scar tissue is really hard to um, work through. So we don't want to do surgery again. And the best way to not have to do surgery again is to do the maintenance. And the maintenance is the stretching. So I'm not sure, um, you know, with, with me, like, really playing a huge role in designing these braces, the other people aren't getting these. And I'm not exactly sure what other AMCers who have had the surgery are getting. Um, I'm wondering if they're seeing a lot more regression than we are because they don't have these. But the nice thing is that, like I said, Anna's PT reached out to me. She wanted to know more about these so that she could um, possibly start recommending something like this um, or working with Matt, who we, you know, as you know, Anna's current orthotist, Matt, is there at Paley now, and he's brilliant. And so if we can work with Matt and, and Fran can work with Matt and we can all find a solution for this to become more the norm for kiddos having that surgery, then we could do a lot more to help other kids maintain that range of motion after having that surgery with Dr. Feldman. So now the problem is, and I explained this to Fran, these joints are made by a company that is not in the U.S. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps getting blurry. And they no longer make them. They no longer make this joint. And we found that out the last time we had Jeff up in Ann Arbor um, make the last pair, which was the set before this one, this one right here. This was the last set that Jeff made. And he pulled out of their storage bins the very last set of spring joints they had. And he contacted the company and they said, sorry, we don't make those anymore. Um, they do have an updated version, though. They do have something else that we can get. And so people are already looking into how to get our hands on those. But um, this is the last time we're going to be able to use this hardware because it's too short in fact, Matt had a really hard time fitting this onto her, her, look how long her leg is now. These are the ones from right before it. They're shorter, but the bars are longer. So thankfully, I think he's going to be able to reuse these bars on this next set that she's about to get. So we'll have one more time with the existing hardware that we have, and then we're going to have to find new hardware. So the goal is find the hardware that works the same way, that has this spring joint that functions the same way because the, the minute changes that this allows are critical. Because the reason is you can, you can stop it, right? If you've got a crank that's turning in five degree increments or even three degree increments, you don't, there's nothing in between. So you get to one and it's not tight enough. You get to the next one and it's too tight. You have no options. With this one, the way it is, you what you do is you crank until you feel resistance. You can tell when her leg can't go anymore because it starts to feel too hard to turn. So you crank and you crank and you crank until it starts to feel like you're hitting a wall, until it starts to feel like it's too hard to turn it anymore. And then once it starts to feel like it's too hard to turn, you give it another little, mm -mm, right, to put it into a stretch. And then you leave it. And then we let it sit for about five minutes or so wow. until it loosens up a bit. And then we do it one more time. We get back on there and we, mm, mm, until it's tight and it's stretching. And then it stays in that stretch for a nice long hour. I'm holding my hand up. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else that Fran might need to know. Um, the spring joint is only on one side. The other side is just a loose joint. Um, there are other spring joints. Do we have any of the older kind that I can show? The box one that slipped? There is another spring joint that we used before this one that was not as good. It looked more boxy, but it would it would shred. It, the force of what's required to hold her inflection would cause it to basically like when you mess up a screw and it starts slipping, it was doing that. And so it would come out of flexion. So those were no good. Really, the it needs to be this design. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be on both sides. It only needs to be on the one side. So it's on the outside. And, um, I don't know, I think that's about it. It goes, it gets bolted into the bottom with two bolts. It gets bolted into the top with two bolts. And do you want me to, let me show what it looks like on your leg. Not this one, because this one's for Matt. Um, can you come help with this part since I don't have two hands? Can you move your head up to the corner of the rug and scoot away a little bit? There we go. All right, so we'll get this brace on. We'll show you guys. I am, just, just enough so they can see it go into flexion. I just want to make sure Fran has all the knowledge she needs to do what she needs to do. So these are inserts. These are new. We've never used these before this last time around. Matt said that since she's bigger now, it's a good idea to have those. So I'm not, we are noticing with this foot where she started uh, getting a pressure sore that because her foot is regressing, the insert is now causing, you know, marks, which is like the sign of she needs treatment. She needs to go have serial casting again, which is, we already have it booked. We're already going to do it. But, um... I just don't know if there's more pressure happening because there's an insert and it, it's less than it would be if she were just in the braces without the insert. That's something I kind of want to talk to Matt about. And yes, these things have to be created. Can I see that real quick? Uh, these have to be created because all of the force when you put her in deflection goes on the top of the thigh where these straps are. And so that kind of protects her from having extreme pressure on her femur that provides a barrier underneath those straps up at the top. See? So you have to have those two and you have to use them. You can't just be cranking against the leg. It's a lot of force. You, you'll see it when I show you, when I crank it down, you'll see her leg lifts up out of the, um, out of the cave. Okay, let me turn you sideways. All right, so this is, again, this is extension. Right? This is zero degrees extension, straight leg. Now we're going to do the cranking to get the flexion. Wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> All right. So you can see it's starting to bend. Yes, Carol, a lot of people call them Pringles because some people wear them down here at the ankle and they call them Pringles. It's basically like a giant Pringle. Oops. <laughs> here. It is. Try not to wobble your leg around, okay? Why are you using it? Because I, I just want to get it all the way into flexion and not worry about that. Um. All right, so right now I'm starting to feel that resistance I was talking about. It feels tight. It feels like it's harder to turn. So we'll go a little bit past that, and now it's tight. And so I'm not going to force it because I don't want to injure her. You just go to resistance. But you can see, look how much it's pulling up out of here. You see? That's the amount of force that's on her femur right now to put this leg into a bent position. And this is something that both orthotists, both Matt and Jeff, have tried to figure out a way around, and there's just no way around it. Because of the amount of force that's happening, that's just part of it. It lifts away from the leg. And the best you can do is just have these couple of straps in place to distribute the pressure and just work with it. You know, it's it's not 
um, bothersome to her because her leg is going to stay up like this. So it's not like it's, you know, she has to lay against it or anything. And this is only for an hour. And when we put it back into extension, it goes back up onto the leg where it's supposed to be. But it is, it is weird. Um, the other thing that we'll see sometimes with these is that, um, you just, you always want to check the toes, right? You want to make sure that she still has circulation because sometimes it'll start to feel like her foot's falling asleep. And then we'll have to adjust these a little bit. But the other thing that you can't do that you never want to do that I've found with these is you don't want to release this while this is still tight because it, it changes the pressure points and then and it, it, it's just not good. You just don't do that. <laughs> you want to put it into extension and straighten it out before you loosen any of the straps and start moving things around. You have to start over. Yeah, you basically have to start over from the original position. But so this is inflection and this is how she stays to stretch. And then you measure it, not by the hardware, because the hardware is not no longer in the center of her femur. You measure it by the center of the femur and the center of the tibia. Can I hold that side for you? So right now, right now, she's at 90 degrees. She's only at 90 degrees right now. So she's got, she's got a ways to go to tighten down. So if this were at night, we would, now that she's done it for a few, look, I can get more turns in. So I just stretched her more. And if we remeasure, actually we should be measuring from the inside. It's, you don't get a good measurement from the outside. Now we're at about 103. So we would leave it for a few minutes and then go even a little bit further than this to get her to that 110. And then she stays at 110 for an hour, gets a really nice, good, long stretch. Mm -hmm. And then she's done. Then and then we straighten it. After the one hour is done, Daddy does that. So hopefully that is enough to help Miss Fran do what she's got to do. Um, and we're going to be there soon so we can always connect with her and show her in person, answer any questions, help out in whatever way we can. Right? Yep. Also, um, there was one time where we thought maybe Janelle could help you get out of bed by tugging the straps. <laughs> so I was thinking... Um, you guys, Daddy and you, Here, mommy. spin around so Daddy can put your other AFO on. Yeah, I was thinking you, Mommy, and Daddy should train, Jam train Jamelli to pull the straps off with my leg not in the brace mm -hmm. so she gets used to it. And then you can put my leg in the brace and then she can do that. And when she's, like, fully trained a bit, then she can do it every morning for me. All right. I have not been looking at comments. I've seen, like, two this whole time because I've been paying attention to what I'm doing off screen. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and throw them up now, answer a few questions. And I think Anna wants to show you her, her finished kitchen. I'll show you everything and where we put it. <laughs> I'll show you, I'll start my freezer, and I'll go my fridge, and then my countertop. Anne says, thank you, Anna, for sharing this publicly. Thanks. Yeah, it's, she knows how helpful it is to be open about her treatment and her therapy and, you know, people are learning and there are, the main thing is there's other arthrogryposis families who follow us and they learn from us about what we're doing and, and how things work and it's helpful to them as they're raising their little AMC or and making medical decisions for their child. Look. So, yep. I'm, I'm a bridge. All right, you're going to sit up now, please? Yeah. All right, let's once sit up. I, once I get to um, yeah, so I'll wait just a couple minutes to see if you guys have any questions about that stuff before we move on to fun stuff. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I'm going to start off at my um, countertop. Then I'll go in my freezer, then my fridge. All right, let's, we'll give, them, let's give them a couple minutes in case they have questions about that so we can answer any questions they have.
How much do I have to spend for us to get treatment for my son's bent knees here in the Philippines? We've had lots of serial casting therapy and we're waiting for the CAFOs. You know, I can't answer that because I don't, I don't know how much it is. Um, if you're paying for it, like out of pocket, it's very expensive. I know that, but you would need to contact the Paley Institute. I know that they do work with a lot of people outside of the country. And so they have a way of getting it as inexpensive as they possibly can. And I know that there are other people who have come from other countries who um, they must have some familiarity with how, you know, any assistance that you can possibly get, uh, people that can help or ways that you can make it happen. I know that if you contact the Paley Institute, they will be able to put together basically a proposal for you or like a quote for how much that would cost so that you know ahead of time if it's something that you can figure out or not. So that would be my best advice for you uh, being in the Philippines is to contact the Paley Institute where Dr. Feldman is and talk to them about it. They will help you figure that out. We have, you know, we live in the U.S., so it's different. We had insurance that, um, thankfully, at the time, I had really good insurance through my job, and they paid for pretty much everything. That, that year that Anna had her double leg surgery, that insurance that I had through my job paid out like a million dollars in insurance claims because of her surgery and her therapies and her braces and everything she had done that year. Michael wants to know if the pain that you feel towards the end of your stretching will lessen in severity in years to come. Can I, uh, that? I don't think you you know the answer. Well, I might. And honestly, I don't know that I know the answer for sure. I'm just kind of guessing based on my knowledge and understanding of her condition. But what I'm going to say, my answer is going to be um, no, it will not lessen. But I also wouldn't expect that it would get worse. And the reason being that the stretching is always done to um, resistance. So the stretching is only going to be as tight or as hard as her legs are. And so it's always going to be the same level of pushing beyond that comfort point. And so I would imagine the discomfort would always remain the same. But it wouldn't get any easier because you're always pushing. That's the whole point of the stretching is to push beyond. You know, it's the exact same thing as someone teaching themselves how to do the splits. When you're learning how to do the splits and you're stretching every single day, you're always going to stretch just a little bit past what is comfortable because that's the stretch, right? Like if you don't push beyond comfort, you're not actually stretching. Splits. Yeah, you can. <laughs> My answer, I think it might be maybe because the more I do it, the more I'll get used to it. And because I'm getting used to it, it, I'll prob it probably won't hurt as much because I'll be like, and I've done this for years on end, I'm, I'm fine with it now. <laughs> so I think maybe. Maybe. All right, well, do you want to stand up and yeah. show, them, show them our hard work? So we, we sorted stuff in the kitchen last night for about two, two and a half hours. And then we um, started putting things away. <laughs> tell them first before I show them. Tell them what? Tell them everything you're getting to them. Oh, that's it. And then now we're done. <laughs> that's it. So this is what it looks like. Oh, that's right. No, Michael, her nerves aren't aren't really uh, affected by sensitivity. It's it's more about the stretch in her muscles and her tendons. Okay, so here's my countertop. Mhm. Mm here's my um my dish drying rack. Mhm. Mm um, here's my stove top, my ladles. Mhm. Mm uh, a spatula, and then I have a little timer over here for like cooking. I can turn it and, mm -hmm. and I can put it every time. Here's a cute little flower that doesn't need any water to stay alive. Saloni gave you that. Mm -hmm. And then a little Japanese kitty. Mama made that. 
That's your touch of mama. And then um, I have up here my cute three solar powered butterflies. Mm -hmm. I have a light that doesn't work anymore because it has no batteries in it. <laughs> and then a little bell. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then my freezer. I have chicken. Oh, pens. you blocked it. I was going to show them what's in the freezer. I have some vegetables, waffles, chicken tenders, ice cream, um, blueberries, floret, broccoli, floret, ravioli, and waffles. Mm -hmm. A bag of waffles and a, and a, a, a box of waffles. And then in my fridge I've got yogurt, milk, orange juice, um, produce, spinach, and kale, and lettuce. And then I've got my condiments and butter and some mustard, spicy yellow mustard. Mm -hmm. And you got microwave. Mm -hmm. And then under the microwave, your bowls and plates yep. and utensils and cups. Yep. You've got an oven. What's inside the oven? Um, mothers. Some cookies. Some cookies. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> and then hanging on there is a towel. And then you've got your your washing machine. Yep. And for your, washing the towel. And your cleaning supplies. It's all, I'm glad it's underneath here because this is where it's going to be found. Mm -hmm. um, then we got a cake. You have a cake. <laughs> You've got your window, mm -hmm. My to, window. to your cat to the castle. Um, but it's just like some menus and stuff in here. Mm -hmm. um, down here is like my cooking and baking utensils. Mm -hmm. Did you put anything in here? I don't know. Open it. <gasps> you have an empty drawer. Hmm. But then down here is like a measuring cup and some like little containers. Yeah, containers. Mm -hmm. And then hold on. And then up here. Up here I've got a mixer, a blender, and a waffle maker. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've got pancake some, griddle. Yep. And I've got a. If you can pull this out a little bit. Yeah, that's why I put it in here, so you could pull it out a little bit. See? A coffee mug. Mm-hmm. Some coffee in it. Um, a little coffee pour thing. Mm-hmm. Some jam, strawberry jam, grape mm -hmm. jam, and peach jam. Now, you just need to be careful when you pull this out to access it. You need to be conscious of the tipping point, right? You can't pull it out halfway, because then it will start tipping. So you can only pull it out about that far. And then you got to be careful getting stuff out of it. And put it back in. Yeah, and then there's some syrup, some sugar, and my convinced Cholula. What's down below? Down below is doors. So, and this side, we've got some sushi, and some cookie dough, and some pie. Yep. And on the other side, we got pizza, some toppings, a cake, chocolate pudding, some more toppings, and cookie dough. <laughs> yeah. Um, hold on, don't go yet. I'm not going. I'm going away. You've got your pots and pans and your cutting boards? Mm -hmm. Here's my pots and What's pans below those? There. Below the cutting board is more pots and pans. More pots and pans and cooking utensils. And then up here you've got some... Eggs and, and special thing. Eggs and... Bread. I got some bread. Can you lift it? Yeah. Is it too heavy? I, I got it. I just have to get the right grip of it. Bread. Nice. All her breads. Lots of bread. I got. Um, and That's then, below the eggs and the bread. Yeah, below the eggs and the bread is all my fruit. Fruit? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's below the fruit? Below the fruit is my vegetables and meats. Vegetables and meats and cheeses. And then what's up here? Some food boxes. Boxes of stuff. And what's below that? Cans. Cans. Queso protein powder. And then below that? Aprons. And then you have your cleaning stuff. Yep, I have my two vacuums. My two vacuums. This one that doesn't work and the one that does work. It's a holder. Then I have a hand broom, a mop, big broom, and a duster. Mm -hmm. Yay, we did it! Oh, <laughs> that is all. That is all.
No, there's like three more things. What? That, of course. Oh, your AMC Princess Anna apron. My phone. Your phone? Mm hmm. With Kathy. And then another cool apron, but guess what? What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very proud of oh, you. Wait, there's something in there's something Can in I tell there. you? There's something in there. Can I tell you? Yeah, but there's something in my dryer. Can I tell you I'm proud of you? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm very proud of you for working so hard because you did more of the work than I did. I just kind of instructed you. Ah, mm. this. Pull it from the other side. Okay. Move your butt to the uh, other direction. <laughs> And pull it. Yeah. Hook your hook your wrist. Or, there you go. And pull. Come on, pull. Come on, pull. Yeah. See? Yeah. What's yeah. In there? There's like a pot holder and a little napkin. Pull it out. You pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Yay. All right. Time to go. We've got other stuff to do. We've been on for a long time and... We've got a lot to get done today. Well, so I don't have a lot to get done today. No, you don't. Well, you've got... Uh, wait, you have Procreate. 4.30. What time is it? 3.57. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I can't have it. All right. Say goodbye I, to everybody. I, I hope this time it's the it's my request that I first requested on the very first class I had about the pickle. You're in a hat. Lounge and a lounge here on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. See you guys later.